in BMS, anatomy is Kriya Sharira, that is physiology, that is physiology is Kriya Sharira and Ratna Sharira is anatomy. Both sciences have got their own merits and own demerits. When you choose, you have to look at what you want to do. If you want to become a doctor, you want to have glamour, you want to go abroad, keep the option of going to USA open, go for modern medicine. You are committed to your indigenous system of medicine, you believe in it, you have experience of your parents or anybody who have dealt with this medicine and you want to go for it, go for Ayurveda medicine. Greetings to all our viewers. हमारे सारे लोग जो हमारे साथ आज जुड़े हुए हैं, उसको सबको मैं शुभकामनाएं देता हूं। And today we shall discuss a very relevant subject and topic about MBBS versus BAMS. तो हम लोग आज MBBS और BAMS के बारे में कुछ चर्चाएं करेंगे, उनकी समानताएं और उनके बीच में जो अंतर हैं, हम उसके ऊपर चर्चा करेंगे। we will discuss differences between MBBS and PMS. So let us begin and see what are the similarities. Kya samanta hai? MBBS stands for Bachelor of Medicine and Bachelor of Surgery. And BMS stands for Bachelor of Ayurveda Medicine and Surgery. Dono courses साढ़े पांच साल के हैं। MBBS में आपको साढ़े चार साल का कोर्स है और एक साल के रोटेशन, इंटर्नशिप है और BMS में भी साढ़े चार साल का कोर्स है और एक साल के रोटेशन, इंटर्नशिप। दोनों के एलिजिबिलिटी क्राइटेरिया वही हैं। आपको नीट के लिए एलिजिबल होना पड़ेगा और नीट को क्वालिफाई करना पड़ेगा। So Qualifying in NEET examination for admission to both these courses. If somebody tells you that BAMS can be given without NEET, then you are being taken for a ride. So please, is baat ko dhyan mein rakhiye ka ki koi bhi course bina NEET qualification ke aapko agar koi karwane ke bhi koshish karta to wo kar. For both MBBS course as well as BMS course, NEET qualification is a must. And the eligibility criteria for NEET are also the same. That is physics, chemistry, biology, aggregate of 50% for unreserved, 40% for reserved category, and 45% for physically challenged of unreserved category. It is the same eligibility criteria for both MBBS admissions and for BMS admissions. Coming to the professionals, when you come to MBBS, you will find that you have four and a half years course divided into first year of one year of two semesters, second year of one and a half years of three semesters, and then third and fourth year of one year of two, two semesters each. Total of four and a half years with nine semesters. In BMS also you have got 1.5, 1.5 and 1.5. So your duration for each year is 1.5. First professional, second professional and third professional. Now coming to the syllabus. Syllabus may you must understand that in this syllabus they are taught anatomy and in BMS is also taught anatomy but anatomy some portion in modern anatomy also is covered in BMS. Unke naam alag hai. The names are different and names are Sanskrit in origin. That is why in the first year you are taught Sanskrit in BMS courses. In MBBS you are not taught Sanskrit. So what do you do? You have to learn some basic Sanskrit in your first year for your BMS courses. Why do you do it? Because all the subjects and all the subjects you have, subjects you have got in BMS, they have a relevance to Sanskrit language. For example, 
anatomy or physiology is named differently in BMS. In BMS, anatomy is Kriya Sharira, that is physiology, that is physiology is Kriya Sharira and Ratna Sharira is anatomy. Ratna means Rashnatmak, structure. Anatomy deals with structure, so Rachna Sharira, structure of the body, it is anatomy, which is called Rachna Sharira. Similarly, Kriya Sharira, Kriya Mani functions, functions of the body, it is covered under physiology. So physiology is known as Kriya Sharira. This is why you Sanskrit jana It is important for you know, to understand Sanskrit terms because these terminology will be used as subject headings for your Ayurveda subjects. Coming to further content, Ayurveda is based upon a traditional indigenous system of medicine. The father of Ayurveda is Chanaka. Charaka Samhita you must have heard, most of you. He was the father of Ayurveda medicine, which is based upon herbs, roots, vegetables. So basically it is herbal in origin. Whereas modern medicine is more or less based upon the scientific medicine, which has evolved over a period of time. It originated sometimes in Egypt or in Greece thereafter and father of our medicine in uh, modern medicine is Hippocrates and Ayurveda medicine is Chanaka. Ayurveda medicine originated in India. Mara Bharatvash may iska origin why iski jaden iski roots are in India and is practiced all around Asia. Modern medicine is practiced around the globe. So with this brief I am sure you will understand ki Ayurveda ka principle jo hai wo ek body ke andar harmony pada karna. The principle of Ayurveda is based upon harmony of the body and this harmony is done between three doshas, they call three doshas, dysfunctions. What are those doshas? The doshas are kapha, pitta and vata. Kapha is phlegm, pitta is bile and vata is air and space. So this is what is, it tries to have a balance between all these things based upon natural elements. Whereas our modern medical science is based upon molecular basis, that is the cell and its functioning. Now let us come to what are the differences in terms of your education. What are the differences in terms of the payments that you make? So in Ayurveda college, you can pay as much as 50,000 to maximum of 3 lakhs per year. Whereas for modern medicine, if you go to a private medical college, you'll be paying almost 15 to 25 lakhs per year. It varies. When you pass out, what is more glamorous? Obviously, the modern medicine is more glamorous because it is more practiced. It is more subscribed to and there is a general tendency and feeling that whenever you want immediate results, you resort to allopathic system of medicine. It is generally believed that Ayurvedic system of medicine will give you long term benefits by creating a harmony between your body functions. Whereas modern medicine will give you probably immediate benefits. So people believe that for emergency, the best course is to go for allopathic medicine. And for chronic ailments, it is better to go for Ayurvedic medicine. To a certain extent, this is true because there are many things in which today modern medicine has no defined or definitive cure. They are only focusing on the symptoms most of many times. Whereas there are certain long-term diseases for which at least Ayurveda is seen to have a cure, something like we call vitiligo, that is leukoderma. Leukoderma in modern medicine, in dermatology, does not have a defined, a definite cure. But Ayurveda claims to have a cure for this. What is a setback for Ayurveda is that the treatments are not standardized as yet. Unlike or unlike 
uh, unlike that of modern medicine where the treatments are standardized and protocols are standardized for each disease element the other basic differences what is important both sciences have got their own merits and own demerits when you choose you have to look at what you want to do if you want to become a doctor you want to have glamour you want to go abroad keep the options of going to usa open go for modern medicine you are committed to your indigenous system of medicine you believe in it you have experience of your parents or anybody who have dealt with this medicine and you want to go for it go for ayurveda medicine remember one thing there is no way of this or that because if i have not got mbbs i want to go for bms ye nahi hona chahiye because then what you are doing is that you are putting something as secondary to primary i never got what i thought was the best so i am now trying to get what i think is the second best you will never ever be committed to that practice of medicine so please be clear in your mind what is your primary goal if your primary goal is modern medicine then please focus on modern medicine if you do not get admission in india in modern medicine please go for equivalent courses abroad but if you want to do indigenous system of medicine and believe me government is giving lot of importance to indigenous system of medicine if you want to go for ayurveda please go for it in the first shot and be committed to it do not do not try to think that this is the easy route out for you practice it with commitment the results will come ayurveda can only spread if the people practicing it are themselves committed to it and themselves confident about that discipline so aapko apne par vishwas hona chahiye ki maine ye ayurveda apni choice se liya hai main bms apni choice se kar raha hu aur mera profession isi mein hai many of you ask me that after qualifications what are my job opportunities what are my employment opportunities mere byabsay ke liye kya kya cheeze hain kya kya mere liye hongi aage chal ke maujood jisko main follow kar sakunga so your employment opportunities are plenty you can go for government medical colleges in terms of teaching for ayurveda you can also go for private practice you can go for various institutes which are practicing ayurveda and various wellness centers but don't do one thing please do not become physician assistants in allopathic hospitals that is the sure way of downgrading your own specialty of ayurveda so whenever you go for ayurveda again repeat and reiterate please be committed to it ayurveda is a good science but you should be committed to it both these sciences require commitment nobody is good nobody is bad both are good if your intent is good your intention is good and both are bad if your intention is not good and your intent and commitment is not so i hope with this small brief you will be able to make the right choice for yourself and progress in your careers whichever you choose whether mbbs or bms thank you and jai hind